Hi there guys and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at the all new Unraid plugin, the Unraid.net My Servers plugin. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. Hi there guys and welcome to the third part in the series all about Unraid 6.9.x. So what are we going to be looking at in this video then? Ok so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a plugin called My Servers. Now I know if you're watching this video and you've just set up a brand new server like I've done here, I know you're dying to go in and install great things like MB and Plex, and Windows Gaming VMs, all of that kind of good things. But let's start with the basics first, then in the following video we'll set up a couple of containers and our first VM. But right now we're going to set up My Servers. And in order to do that, we need to actually have an account on the Unraid website. So we want to go across to the Unraid website, to unraid.net, and then click here where it says Community, and then visit the forum. And if you don't already have an account here, then click on to sign up. So pop in your details here. And now if we scroll down here, we've got two choices here. We can answer some security questions, which can be used to verify our identity, such as what is your favourite video game or book. Well, for me, my favourite video game, it's got to be Half-Life, but that's probably the same as loads of people, so probably not really a secure answer to this question. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up two-factor authentication instead. So I'm going to check this box here to opt out of that, and then confirm I'm not a robot. Oh, you've got to love this game. <laughs> Maybe this should be my favourite video game. And we need to agree to the terms of use, and you can read that here. So once you're happy with that, click on to create my account, and then we just need to confirm the email. Okay, so once we've verified our email address, we'll be ready to use the account. So on your account name at the top, click on to that, and go to account settings, and here click on security and privacy. Now we're going to have to re-put our password in to get to this part, and click this button, re-authenticate. And so because I opted out of the security questions, I'm going to enable two-factor authentication. So I'm going to click on enable here, and I'm going to scan the code, and pop that in here. OK, and so now my account's secured. Right, so let's go back to the Unraid server now. Go across to the Apps tab, and here we're going to search for unraid.net. And we're going to install this plugin here, so click onto the arrow to install. So with that done, let's click done, and we can leave the apps tab, I'm going to go back across to the main page, and now we can see at the top here, there's a sign in button, so let's click onto that. So clicking here prompts us to sign up, yeah we could sign up here, but I prefer to just do it on the website and set up two factor straight away. So because we've already signed up, we just want to scroll down and click already have an account. So we just pop in our username and password here, and click onto sign in. And here we can see that my server's been registered into the Unraid.net account. So let's close this window. OK, so now that's done. Let's go on to settings here. So on the settings page here, we want to click on to management access. And then we want to scroll down here. And you can see here we've got flash backup. I'm going to click on to activate for that. And again, scroll down. And now we can see it says it's activated and it's up to date. So what that's done is, is it's backed up our flash drive to the Unraid.net servers. So should anything happen to our flash drive, we can easily restore it. So let's go up to the top here and click onto our username. And we can see here this little menu. Now at the top here, we can click on Upgrade Key if we ever wanted to upgrade our license. And here we've got the name of the server, Galactica. It's got a little tick and the server name is in black, showing it has a connection to Unraid.net. Now if you find when you install a plugin, when you come here, that your server isn't in black with a tick, maybe it looks orange and it's got an exclamation mark next to it, like you can see on this server here. This means that it doesn't have a proper connection to the Unraid.net servers. Now the easiest way to try and fix this is probably just to reboot the server, and once it's booted up you'll have a proper connection. Now you normally only have to do this once, just when you first install the plugin, but if you like me, you don't want to actually have to reboot the server, then let me show you another way. Now I've just installed the plugin on this server here, and again I've got the same problem, it's not connecting to the mothership properly. So what we can do is we can just open up a terminal window, and just type unraid-api space restart. Then just hit enter, and once that's done just close the terminal window. 
then just refresh the page and then you'll see we've got a proper connection to the server. OK, so let's move on. The next thing here we've got my service dashboard. If we click onto this button here and it opens a new browser tab into our account on the Unraid forums and here you can see it says my servers and on this page it will show all of the servers that you got connected to unraid.net. You can see here here's the one I'm on now, Galactica. If I hover over the information here, I can see that the server's been on for one day, 19 hours and 48 seconds. The license that I've got is the plus version here. And the version of Unraid I'm running is Unraid 6.9.1. Okay, so here it says access unavailable because we can set up remote access to the server, which we can get to from this page on our account on unraid.net. And we'll look at that in a moment. Um, here we can download our registration key for the flash drive. So it gives us registration key management. Underneath that here, because we activated flash backup in the My Service settings, clicking on this will download a full backup of our Unraid flash drive, allowing us to restore it should anything go wrong with our USB stick. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually simulate the flash drive failing. So let's go over to the Unraid server and shut it down. And once the server's shut down, I'm going to remove the USB flash drive and pop it into my computer. So let's go across to my PC. And the flash drive's plugged into this PC now, so I'm going to simulate it failing by just basically erasing the whole thing. OK, so that flash drive definitely won't boot. So let's close this window. OK, so I'm going back to the My Service part of my Unraid.net account on the Unraid website. And I'm going to download a copy of my flash drive by clicking Generate Flash Backup here. And here we can see it's downloading. And with that downloaded file, I'm going to just pop it onto the desktop. OK, and you'll notice that the backup is actually a zip file, but we don't actually need to unzip it. We can restore it straight from the zip. So to restore it, I just need to open up the Unraid Flash Creator tool. So just like when we created our flash drive, we need to click on Select Version, but we're going to choose Local Zip so we can restore from the backup. So just browse to the file or do what I'm doing here, just drag and drop it into the box. Choose the USB flash drive you want to write your backup to and click on to write and confirm you don't mind the whole thing being overwritten. OK, and when it says writing done, that's all good. Now, one thing I recommend to do before removing the USB flash drive. Now, this isn't strictly necessary, but I find sometimes when restoring a flash drive, if I don't do this, it isn't bootable. So just do this just to double check it will work. In the root of the flash drive here, you'll see three files called make bootable. There's a make bootable Linux, Mac and make bootable .bat for Windows. So just run the file which corresponds to your operating system. I'm on a Mac here, so I'm going to run this in terminal now. And what this does is just make sure that the flash drive is bootable. OK, so now I can eject the flash drive and pop it back into the Unraid server and hopefully boot back straight up into the OS just as we were before. OK, good. So the server has started back up. Now, one thing to notice while we're here is by default, the Unraid array doesn't start automatically, but we may as well change that whilst we're here. Go to settings and go to disk settings and I'm going to enable the auto start. So my array always auto starts from now on. OK, so I'm going to start up the array and we can see we're back to where we were, but we do need to sign back into Unraid.net. And so the server's back up and running just as it was before. Now, what you may have noticed is I restored the backup onto the same flash drive as what I originally set up the server on. So in this situation, it might be because I accidentally deleted the flash drive or the flash drive became corrupted. And so I need to restore it from a backup. But if the flash drive totally failed, and I'd restored it onto a different flash drive, then there'd be one extra step I'd need to do after the server rebooted. So let's do that now. Off camera, I'm going to restore onto another flash drive the same backup. OK, so when you start the server up and you've restored your flash backup onto a different USB key, you're going to see at the top it says GUID error and to purchase a key. Well, we don't need to purchase a key. What we need to do is click onto our username here. And basically what this message says is that the license key is from a different USB flash drive and the GUID from the flash drive that was originally registered is different to this new one. So what we need to do is click onto here where it says replace key and it will open up this window and we need to log into our Unraid.net account. When we replace our license key and have it registered to a new USB flash drive, then the license key then is permanently tied to this new USB key. And the old one, the serial number or the GUID, becomes blacklisted so it can't be used with Unraid again. So we need to tick this box just to say we understand that. And after which, just click on to sign in. And that's it. The license key is replaced. Easy as that. 
And now we're back up and running, so if we scroll down to the bottom, we can click on start, start up the array, and then we'll be back to where we were. So for you guys new to Unraid, you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, it used to be much harder. We'd have to go to the registration page, click on replace key, then put in an email address, click replace key again. Then we'd be sent an email. In that email, we'd have to copy and paste a URL into the Unraid GUI to install the new key. So it took quite a long time at a time which is going to be pretty stressful if our flash drive happens to fail. So we don't want to be going through a whole bunch of steps. So that's one thing I really do like about Unraid, is these little improvements, these kind of quality of life improvements. Not things that we're going to use all the time, but when it comes to the point when we're going to use them, I'm really glad that they're there. So now let's go and look at a feature that you might want to use a bit more often. And to do that, I'm going to go over onto another server, which is in a different location to here, that I've also added into my account with my servers. And that feature is to give us secure remote access to our Unraid server when we're away from home. And once we've set that up, we gain access to our server through the My Servers part of our Unraid.net account. And you can see here at the moment, all of this says access unavailable because there's no remote access enabled on any of these servers here. So let's go ahead and set it up on this server here. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is to provision an SSL certificate. So to do that, we just click onto this button here. And sometimes when you do that, you might get this error that you can see here. Some routers have something called DNS rebinding protection, which you'll need to switch off in the router before proceeding forward. And sometimes this rebinding protection can be built into your ISP's own DNS servers. And sometimes all you need to do is just to change your ISP's DNS to a public one such as Google's, you know, the 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. But sometimes it's just as easy as clicking the provision button again and then it might go through. OK, right, great. This time the certificate was created. And now we need to log back in because the address has actually changed to a subdomain of unraid.net. OK, so now we're logged back in. We need to go to the management access under the settings tab. Now, one thing to do is we need to make sure that this use SSL is set to auto which it already is here. And now you can see that we created the certificate. We've got the option to allow remote access. So I'm going to click that onto yes. And here we choose the WAN port we're going to use. Now, I highly recommend that you don't use port 443. It's much better to change that to something else. Using a different port basically makes it a little bit more secure because the port isn't well known. Obviously, everyone knows port 443. So I'm going to use 14444. Now this port, it doesn't have any kind of official use, so I think it's quite a good one to use. And then click apply. Now let's scroll down again. Now if I click check here, I'm going to get an error. Because I'm meant to be forwarding this port here, 14444, to the IP address of the Unraid server on port 443. So I need to go across to my router, and I'm going to go across to the advanced tab. You just need to find the port forwarding part of your router. And I'm going to click here under Advanced Setup. I'm going to go to Port Forwarding and Triggering here. And at the moment, I've already got a Port Forwarding rule set up for OpenVPN. So ignore this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on to Add Custom Service. And for service name, you can call it anything, but I'm just going to call it Unraid. And for service type, we don't need UDP, TCP only. And the external starting port is 14444. And the end is the same, 14444. Now, I'm not going to click use the same port for the internal ports because I want to forward all the traffic coming on this port here to actually go through to 443. So this is like the outside port coming into the router. It's going to be coming in at 14444, but I want it to translate across to 443. And I want it to go across to the server whose IP address for me is 192.168.0.199. So I'm just going to click on to apply. And we can see the rule here. Again, 14444 going to 443 to the internal IP address, which is that of my server. 192.168.0.199. So now if I go back to the Unraid server web GUI and click on check again now here, it says my server is reachable from the internet. So that's perfect. Now there's one thing I want to show you back on the router here. You know, make sure on your router you don't have any open ports that you don't need. So if for any reason when you set up your port forwarding it doesn't work, please don't set up something called DMZ. Now if I go across here to setup and I go to my WAN setup here, most routers will have a setting to allow what's called a DMZ server. So if I was to click this, 
and put the IP address of the server, what this basically does is it just opens up all of the ports available on your router and it will route them straight through to the server. What this will do is it will guarantee that your server gets hacked. You will lose all of your data and you'll wake up one morning, come to start up a movie on Plex and you'll have absolutely nothing there. So under no circumstances ever enable DMZ. If for any reason your port forwarding doesn't work, when you click this button to check here, just go across to the Unraid forums and post there for help. Because it's just not worth risking opening up any security vulnerabilities onto your network. So any port forwarding rules that you set up and they don't work, just delete them afterwards. So you only need one rule for this to work. Forwarding, for example, I'm doing here. Forwarding TCP port 14444 to port 443 to the internal IP address of your Unraid server. Okay, so I guess it's time to test this out now. So I'm going to go to the My Servers page. Uh, this server actually is quite a few miles away from where I am. It's not actually on my local network. And to actually connect to a server from My Servers, you just click onto the Remote Access button here. And here we are, we're straight into the server. So we need to type in our username and password. And click on to log in. Okay, so here I am accessing this Unraid server remotely. Now if you've been following this series you'd have seen us set up a root password in the previous video and that's why it's really important to have a strong password because this is a gateway into your server. Now I've got another series of videos coming out very very soon all about security, remote access, reverse proxies, everything you need to know. So in those videos I'm going to go into things really deeply about how to secure your server, do remote access, do reverse proxying, all that kind of thing. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. Now, in the next video in this series, we're going to be looking at setting up our first VM and our first few containers. And of course, we'll be doing that using all of the new features in Unraid 6.9. Well, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. As I always ask, if you did like it, please hit up that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share the video with anyone who you think might like it. Now I want to give a big shout out, a big thank you to all of my Patrons and supporters out there. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, I really really do appreciate it. And if anyone's watching who'd like to support the channel, then please find the links in the description below. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you in the next video.